Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I'm gonna show off this thing. So this thing right here is uh, not just an i5-2500K that's missing part of its IHS and got part of its substrate scratched up. This thing is actually going to be somewhat useful now because this thing is what Bullseye would call a probinator. So essentially this CPU has an oscilloscope probe hookup directly soldered to it, which then directly goes into my oscilloscope. And that is a lot more accurate than trying to measure um, the V-core array that, for example, this little spot that I scratched up to measure resistances or the backside of the socket. Specifically, the backside of the socket is what I tried before. And on this motherboard and CPU, I just saw nothing. Like, <laughs> you could run several loads on it and it just wouldn't show any transients and I'm not exactly sure why because it should show things happening there but it isn't presumably because the these older CPUs just don't really draw that much power compared to newer CPUs so yeah I decided to build a probinator uh, to get as physically close to the actual CPU die as possible and therefore bypassing all the impedance that comes from, you know, going through the PCB and the socket pins and the pads. We are just directly on the substrate, directly next to the die, which is basically as close as you could get to directly measuring the voltage that goes into the CPU. Uh, and yeah, so what this thing is useful for is just measuring the transient response of the CPU very, very precisely and the nice thing is, because this is attached to the CPU, not the motherboard, you can transfer this into other motherboards and then have very, very consistent measurements because you're measuring from the CPU. Because if you would take a capacitor from the back side of the motherboard, well, not every motherboard has the same capacitor arrangement on the back and you would be measuring in a slightly different spot and the PCB might be slightly different and then just how the thing is built is going to be different, which will lead to slightly different results. But if you have your probe directly on the CPU like this, then that is not going to be a problem. And everything is relative to the CPU, which is the same one in every single test. Now, you might be wondering why I did this uh, with an i5-2500K on this uh, random old gigabyte motherboard. And that's because, well, you see what I needed to do to the CPU. <laughs> I really didn't want to do that to my 8700K um, and that's the reason why I'm doing it with this because this motherboard is disposable, the CPU is disposable, the CPU is also very cheap and really crap at overclocking so this thing was literally useless to me and now it no longer isn't because now I can make very precise measurements uh, for transient response using this thing and what I mainly want to use this for is showing off how how heavy different loads on the CPU are because there is a huge and I mean huge difference in how heavy some of these loads are uh, specifically Cinebench. Cinebench is a surprisingly light test which is why you should not use it as a stress test and we'll get into specifically why and I'm going to show you just how horrible everything else is compared to Cinebench because Cinebench is essentially just a straight line um, yeah, but that is essentially what I want to use this for and well I'm doing this on an older platform because it's it's cheap you know uh, I, I don't specifically need this if I break any of this then that's not a huge loss this motherboard was like 20 bucks the CPU was like 10 bucks uh, so you know not a huge loss if I break any of it um, there's one slight problem though because this is an i5-2500K this is a very old CPU by today's standards and it doesn't support all the new instruction sets. For example, it does base AVX, but no AVX2 and of course no AVX512, which means that some newer loads, like for example the newest version of Linpack actually doesn't run on it. It will like crash and not run. So I'm using a slightly older version of Linpack. Uh, that works just fine. Um, and for example, things like the newest version of Prime95 also just, it runs, but it's like really weird because it's not really putting the CPU under any kind of real load. Um, so I'm not using Prime95 today. Y-Crunch is also slightly weird. It's better than Prime95, but it's still giving me some kind of inconsistent results, which is why the I'm mainly just going to run Linpack 
and then Cinebench, and uh, if 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 we feel like it, we can do Super Pi too, because uh, Super Pi is just it's just a giant mess because it's a single core benchmark, and the uh, Windows task scheduler keeps shuffling it around between the four cores, and it's just a total mess, and it's just kind of funny to look at. But yeah, so this right here is the Probinator 2500, and I'm now going to put a heatsink on it, and we are now going to take a look at the transient response of the CPU as it's running. Before we continue, I'd like to thank our recurring sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers professional PCB manufacturing and assembly services of all shapes and sizes, whatever you need for your project. You can quickly get a quote by just telling them some basic information about what you need, and if you like what you're seeing, you can upload your design files and go straight ahead to payment, fabrication, and then shipment. And even if you don't need a PCB-specific project, you can still find some very good options here, because PCBWay also offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. And if you need something before November 30th, you can currently make use of PCBWay's Black Friday sale, with a discount of up to 50%. And should you miss the Black Friday sale, there will also be an Xmas 2023 sale to look forward to after. If any of this sounded interesting to you, then please go ahead and give PCBUA a try. All right, so here we are. Uh, what you're seeing right now on the screen is just the CPU at idle on the desktop. So you can already see that uh, quite a lot of stuff is going on because this is a CPU, it's not a GPU. When this thing is idling, it's not actually idling, because every now and then it needs to process some things. Like, for example, you can see whenever I move the uh, mouse around, it changes quite a lot. <laughs> so yeah, so like a CPU does a lot more things than just calculate frames in, like, like in parallel. So CPUs on an oscilloscope are like extremely messy compared to a, uh, a GPU. So yeah, so this is what uh, what you get in... Uh, when the CPU is just on desktop doing its thing and like stuff in the background is running. But let's start up Cinebench. Because I just want to show this off first thing. Because everything that's going to come after is much, much worse. Uh, and I'm also going to put up uh, Core Temp and CPU Z so we can take a bit of a closer look at what the CPU is doing. So the CPU, like I said before, is an i5-2500K. Uh, and it's it's not showing it right now, but the CPU is set to 4.5 gigahertz, and it's getting about 1.4 to 1.45 volts uh, under load, which is you know, quite a lot. But this is also uh, in a very old 32 nanometer quad core, so it's not like this thing is gonna you know overheat from that. We are going to slightly hit formal throttling uh, in Linpack, but it's not so that the CPU like drops off. A lot it's like one or two cores might drop like 100 or 200 megahertz so it's like really not that big of a problem uh, because this thing never draws more than like 140 watts um, so yeah so here's Cinebench R23 uh, which is the newest Cinebench and you'd be forgiven for saying well you just said that Prime95 and like the newest uh, Y-Cruncher just kind of run weird on this because the CPU is so old and those loads are so new so why are you using Cinebench R23? Well uh, I've also tested Cinebench R11, 15 and 20 and they all behave exactly the same <laughs> and I'm gonna show that off um, it's just that I'm using R23 right now because you know, it's been said that this newer version is, you know, it's AVX accelerated and the other ones are apparently not. And I mean, the CPU does support base AVX, so we should see a higher load if it is, or if it's properly implemented. Um, it's not showing a difference. Um, so yeah, so I just want to use this to show that, you know, no, it's not just the old Cinebenches, the new one is also still crap. So. Right now it's loading, and once it starts doing its thing, yeah, that's it doing its thing. You know what I said about straight line? <laughs> because it is. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go to 50 millivolts per division. So we can see a little bit better what's going on here. And let's just bring this thing down. There we go. So you can see a little bit is going on. It's not a completely straight line, but it compared to what we're going to run next, it pretty much is a straight line. And if we bring our trigger up, 
to capture some transients. Actually, that looks like a that looks like a resonance artifact. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. That was not happening yesterday. Is the I think my oscilloscope probe line is like near something that's causing interference. So let's rearrange it a bit. Yeah, that looks more like a normal transient. So yeah, <laughs> that that right there is a Cinevenge transient, and it's uh, barely larger than, you know, just the background noise. Well, not really background noise, like, the, the this is like the worst load transient that Cinevenge will produce, and it's like, not really existent. Like, this is, so, we are at 50 millivolts per division, so one of these, um, you know, divisions is 50 millivolts, so you can see also from the VPP, you can just tell Yep, the entire transient, from top to bottom, like, everything just kind of fits into one division. Keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah. So, we're losing, like, 20 millivolts, essentially, is what it's dropping down. And if you look at the image, yeah, you know, that, that drop-off does kind of look like it's about 20 millivolts. And that is pretty much nothing. Uh, yeah, and, like, to, just to bring this back up, like, we are in 100% load on all four cores, we are at 4.5 gigahertz, actually above 4.5, because this motherboard, like, does 100.3 BCLK by default for some reason. Um, and, yeah, like, uh, the, the CPU is going. Um, but one thing that you will also notice, even without an oscilloscope, is we're only drawing 90 watts, which is not a lot. That That is, that is not a lot, and also the temperatures are, like, it's in the 70s or 60s even for like core zero it's not running very hot and it's not drawing a lot of power and that is going to change with the thing we run next so let's actually stop this and do go to the thing we're gonna run next and the thing that I'm going to run next is into burn test on maximum stress level so into burn test is basically just linpack with a more fancy UI um, this also uses the slightly older version of the Linpack algorithm that runs just fine on the 2500K. Like, the very newest one just doesn't work anymore. Um, and we're just gonna start this now. And this right now is it just loading. Uh, you will very much see... <laughs> it will be very visible once the uh, first loop starts calculating. Because it will just turn into a massive... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That right here, that actual massive cliff of a drop off. I can go even even lower here. That right there, that is a proper transient. That is a proper transient. Let's clear the. Yeah, so we're getting like <laughs> three times the VPP, and you know. Our average is 1.43, and we're dropping down to 1.38. That is a lot more than 20 millivolts. That is 50 millivolts. We are dropping as much as the entire VPP of Cinebench was. And if we look at, at this now, like you can see that some of the cores are now not at 4.5 anymore, because we are now drawing close to 130 watts, and we are actually reaching 98 degrees on core number 2, which means that, you know, we're now thermal throttling. So... Yeah, um, this is just completely different. This is just a completely new dimension of how heavy this is for the CPU to run uh, compared to Cinebench. Even the newest Cinebench, R23, which was comparatively good from what I heard. And we are going to run the older Cinebenches. It's going to be the exact same thing. It's not just that, you know, the newest Cinebench doesn't run properly on the CPU anymore. Um, but yeah, so this right here... <laughs> is a proper transient. This is what a proper transient looks like. Just, yeah, just a massive spike. Like, most of the transient is still in overshoot, uh, which is probably just due to me using just the auto LOC setting on this motherboard. Um, so, yeah. But, like, again, we are still at 50 millivolts per division, and it's just, if I bring the, if I bring it, the average up to where it's, like, straight in the middle, 
you can see this downward spike pretty much exact, like almost reaches down one entire division. So this is like 45, actually it's touching the uh, border of the division one. So like every now and then we are actually dropping 50 millivolts. So yes, the undershoot from Intel burn test is equivalent to the VPP of Cinebench. And like we are seeing here, most of the VPP is actually an overshoot, which doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Oh, and that's the first loop gun. We're gonna see like our results soon. It should be like 108 something gigaflops. It's taking its time to. Oh, there we go. Oh, even 111. Yeah. So that's the first loop done. We can also just do straight up Limpack. Now this is the slightly older version of Limpack, like this version, because the oops. That was wrong. Because the newest version just, uh, yeah, like it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. Oh wait, did it? I oh, know Limpack did start running because I, like, something is running on the CPU right now, but this is not that. Uh, well, we're definitely running Limpack. <laughs> it's just. Just the interface seems to have disappeared. Uh, well, anyway, like you can tell from the transient, like that's very similar because Intel Burn Test is basically just Linpack. So again, very similar result. Like we get a very, very large transient spike compared to Cinebench. We have about 50 millivolts of undershoot, and you know, like you know, let's actually clear the statistics a bit. Uh, yeah, like 140, 150 millivolts of VPP. I've actually seen up to 170 uh, millivolts VPP when I was pre-testing yesterday. Uh, and our power consumption is actually slightly lower, like 125 now. Still reaching like 98, uh, 96, 90, there we go, 98. So we are still in thermal throttling territory, still holding above 4 gigahertz, although that, that one core went below it. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's not torture the CPU anymore. Let's run something that is you know, uh, Cinebench again. So I'm going to show off uh, Cinebench R11.5. So this is, you know, the Cinebench that you would have used when the CPU came out. So this is the error equivalent Cinebench. And as you can see right now, <laughs> my trigger just doesn't touch anything anymore because, yeah, it's the exact same behavior as R23. And this is not going to change if we run R15 or R20. It's it's just kind of, you know, we're like back to drawing around 90 watts. The temperatures are in the 70s and 60s for that one core. Holding 4.5 steady because we're not drawing any power anymore. It's still 100% load, you know? You know, CPU is fully utilized. Just, uh, just a bummer that most of that is spent just kind of not doing anything. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, it's not just the newer Cinebenches, it's the old Cinebenches too, because Cinebench in general is just, it, it's a benchmark. Like, that's what it is, let's just run an R15 too. Like, it's a benchmark. It's not a stress test, it's a benchmark. It will tell you how fast your CPU is. Yep, same image again. It, it will tell you how fast your CPU is. It will not tell you if your CPU is stable. Well, if it's, like, horribly unstable, then I guess Cinebench will tell you about that. But you cannot use Cinebench to stress test and then run something that's heavier than Cinebench and not be surprised that the CPU is crashing, because it will be crashing. Like, uh, if you load up uh, Minecraft on any newer version, like post 1.18, I think, if you just load up Minecraft... Uh, like, while it's loading, it puts an insanely heavy load on the CPU. Uh, I've actually had my 8700K crash loading Minecraft when it was passing the TimeSpy CPU test, which is actually quite heavy. Like, the TimeSpy CPU test is no joke. <laughs> like, it's not super heavy, it's, it's, it's not, like, Linpack heavy, but you do need to have, you know, stability where you can at least, like, play games. Except Minecraft, I guess. So... 
Yeah. Um, and if you use Cinebench to stress test something like that, and then you try to load Minecraft and your thing crashes, well, that's because Cinebench just... It, it's just this. You know? Yeah, R20, again, is like... That, that that that's the transients you get. It's like there's maybe like five watts of power consumption difference between the different cinebenches, but like all of them on the oscilloscope look like this. It's just yeah, there's just not really any transients of note that you can barely tell that this is undershooting. It, it's just it's just not really doing anything. So. Yeah, um, that's why I say Cinebench is essentially a straight line. And I've seen people do that with newer CPUs and seen the exact same thing. So, yeah, it's not just this being, you know, an old CPU behaving that way. Cinebench really just is a straight line, and you shouldn't use it for stress testing. It's perfectly fine if you want to use it as a benchmark and compare performance numbers. Just don't use it as a stability test. Just, 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 just don't. Use Y Cruncher or Linpack, those are really my favorites for stress testing. Prime 95 should also be fine, it's just that I I don't quite like it as much as Linpack or Y Cruncher. Um, yeah, because like Linpack and Y Cruncher are also like pretty good benchmarks at the same time, and they also are like very dependent on, on RAM. Like Y Cruncher is actually also a RAM benchmark, uh, stress test I mean. Like if your RAM is unstable, Y Cruncher will probably crash even if the CPU is fully stable. So I just kind of like Linpack and Y-Cruncher for stress testing. Those are my recommendations. Uh, my recommendation is also to not use this because <laughs> of that. And actually, let's um, for for fun at the end, let's run SuperPy. Now, SuperPy is a single core benchmark. So it only uses one of our four cores. And because I've not set affinity, Windows will keep shuffling the load around between the different cores, which means we're going to see a horrible mess. So, yeah, we're actually going to have to probably... Oh, not that way. Probably have to zoom out quite a lot. Oh, God, it reset the offset. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, <laughs> this is what SuperPi does. It's just kind of, yeah. <laughs> I I tried to use SuperPy as an example of like, you know, this is a single core benchmark, and I wanted to compare, you know, the single core benchmark to Cinebench and go like, they are probably closer together than, than Cinebench is to Linpack, but this is just a horrible mess. <laughs> I cannot get good measurements out of this because it is just shuffling around so much like it's just like these upward spikes I'm not really sure what it does and if I move my mouse around it gets even worse like <laughs> this is me moving the mouse around <laughs> because um, Windows gives a higher priority to mouse movement than pretty much anything else that's running so if you start moving your mouse around uh, it it gets significantly worse because every time your mouse movement changes the CPU stops whatever it's doing, calculates the movement of the mouse, and then goes back to doing whatever it was doing. Um, which is also how you can make some stress tests more intense. Like, it depends on what exact setup you have, like what exact CPU you have, what exact load you're running. But I've seen it that you can move around your mouse, and then because of this, because it will essentially force the CPU to go idle for, for a couple milliseconds, because, you know, calculating mouse movement is not a very heavy all-core load. Um, it makes the transients like a lot worse in, in some cases. So if you feel like, I don't know, moving your mouse around in circles for a couple minutes, I guess you could do that while you run uh, Y Crunch or Linpack to make your load a little bit heavier still. Um, and yeah, then you get a mess like this. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, like no mouse movement, mouse movement, no mouse movement, mouse movement. It is just, uh, 
it is just horrible. Like, uh, yeah. And I think with that, uh, we've said pretty much everything I wanted to say. Like, my my main message here is that not, you know, 100% load does not equal 100% load. For example, like a lot of RAM stress tests, like uh, MEM test uh, or test MEM5, will actually also cause 100% CPU load. But like, you will see that the power consumption is low and the temperatures are low. Uh, because really all the CPU is doing is like reading the RAM and then writing something to the RAM and then wait for the RAM to do its thing and then repeat, which is like not a lot to do for the CPU. It's essentially just waiting for like 80 to 90% of the time it's doing anything. Like it's 100% utilized because 100% of its time is spending operating that RAM stress test, but like all the RAM stress test does is like wait for the RAM to do something. <laughs> um, which is why those programs also cause 100% load, but your CPU is not really under any actual, you know, real load. Um, so yeah, so if you see 100% load, it doesn't mean that your CPU is under necessarily under a very heavy load. Um, so make sure that if you're stress testing your CPU, you use a proper program like Linpack, like Ycruncher, uh, something like that, to really make sure that your CPU is actually being stress tested and you're not just looking at 100% load but really all the CPU does is you know sit around waiting for something to happen which Cinebench is a pretty great example of it's just not really doing anything um, uh, and yeah so with that I bid you farewell for this video thank you for watching and until next time goodbye